Do you see anything? Ah! Something's got me! That was me. I'm sorry. <gasps> I see a light. What is it? It's so pretty. I'm feeling happy, which is a big deal for me. I want to touch it. Oh. Ooh. Hey, come back. <laughs> Come on back here. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get I'm you. I'm gonna swim with you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna be your best friend. Good feelings gone. <laughs> I'm Jamie Fober for IamRogue.com, and I'm here in San Francisco at the Academy of Sciences Museum talking to the filmmakers behind the new Finding Nemo 3D, which will be in theaters on September 14th. Before Nemo came out, I would take my kids to the aquarium, and uh, there would be tanks with fish that I knew were in Finding Nemo, and nobody was really looking at them. And I right. said, said to my kids, come back here in a few months after Nemo comes out, and there'll just be nothing but kids pressed against the glass. You knew, exactly you knew that, it would, you knew that, that the film would have that sort of impact. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, there hadn't been a film like that. So, of all the Pixar films to transfer to 3D, why Finding Nemo? What was it about this film that really lent itself to the format? I think it's a combination of this beautiful environment that they're in, you know, this colorful, amazing reef and the floating particulate matter that makes it so volumetric, and the charm of the story. It's just such a funny and engaging story that the, the combination of the two just make this a great theatrical experience that you really should get out and see on the big screen. Well, when we originally made Finding Nemo, we, we pulled a lot of tricks out of our hat to try to really cement the illusion for the audience that they were really underwater, that they were believably seeing fish kind of swimming around in the ocean. And a lot of the trickery that we did ended up lending itself really well to really exploding that illusion in 3D. I mean, when I'm watching Finding Nemo in 3D, I sometimes feel like I'm back with my scuba suit on when I was on the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. I feel like I'm actually swimming through underwater and watching a movie. Yeah, it gives you that effect. Um, the film deals with uh, um, universal themes, friendship, fatherhood. Is that really what you think sort of lends itself to making the film so timeless? Because it really has stood the test of time. Yeah, I think so. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a simple story well told. I mean, there's, there's automatic drama in a story of a, a parent going to any lengths to try to get their lost child back. And I think that's why it's continued to speak to audiences. You know, kids can relate to it, the idea of like, getting lost. And parents can relate to not only the idea of trying to find a, a lost child, but also learning to, to ease up and let your children make their own mistakes and go out into the world and live their own lives. Yeah, in watching the movie again, I was reminded about how good Albert Brooks and Ella DeGeneres' voice performances were. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, they, they were both really fantastic in the film. Um, I, I know they both had a great time making the film, and they were both perfect for it. And uh, Ellen, especially, has just not stopped talking about being Dory all these years. It, you know, we often, we often tell the actors that by casting them in one of our films, we're really giving them a gift, that for the rest of their lives, they can make children happy just by, you know, Ellen DeGeneres can always say, I'm Dory, and talk to a child on the telephone as Dory, and they believe that they're talking with Dory, and that's something that they... It's a gift that they have for the rest of their lives. That really is an amazing yeah. gift. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about the process of uh, transferring to 3D? What, what really was entailed in the, in the process? Our first challenge in recreating a movie like Nemo in 3D is just gaining access to those original assets. The version of the software that was used when creating the film originally doesn't exist in that state anymore. So we have to put together a technical pipeline that works using some old tools and some new tools. From there, we have to get the shots to just work and look right. A lot of problems can occur as a result of changes in the software, storage location, etc. So we have to get the shots to look right. From there, we can go into making it in 3D, making the creative 3D choices, etc. What was your first reaction when you saw the 3D? When they started bringing back? I was know, amazed elements, at how, yeah. how good it looked in 3D. Um, I, as with every film that we've created 3D versions of, I'm always amazed that it looks like we meant to shoot it in 3D in the first place, even though we actually didn't make it that way. Um, but Nemo, more than any film that we've done, I think really uh, takes advantage of, of, of the 3D experience. Because I, I, we probably would have been making 3D movies right from the beginning. John Lasseter's always been a huge fan of 3D. In fact, his wedding videos were actually shot in 3D. You're kidding. No, so he, um, <laughs> he uh, or the photos, yeah, the photos he took at the wedding were in 3D. He's always loved it, we've always loved it. I, I spent my childhood in, enchanted by my Viewmaster, so 3D's kind of in our DNA, and it's fun to finally bring out our that it can come out, yeah, yeah. I gotta find my son Nemo! Hello. <laughs> Fish are friends, not food. <laughs>
Grab shell, dude. Grab one. Oh. No hurling on the shell, dude, okay? Just waxed it. Duck! That's not a duck, it's a bell again! Oh. Everybody hold on! <laughs> Little help over here. <laughs> How's it going, Bob? You know, I speak whale. Come back. It's just as well, he might be hungry. Don't worry, whales don't eat clownfish, they eat krill. Swim away! Oh, look, krill! Now watches the ships that <gasps> move, Dory! Nice.